Beginning in the early 1960s, the second wave of feminism evolved into a social movement in search of equal rights to education, politics, the body, and sexuality. Women were still expected to start a family at an early age, have kids, and care for the family and house. Few women had paying jobs, but those that did were usually restricted to nursing, teaching, and becoming a secretary. This would all change soon enough. Alice Paul, a feminist, suffragist, and political strategist, drafted the Equal Rights Amendment, also known as the ERA. This amendment states, equality of rights under the laws shall not be denied or abridged by the United States or any state on account of sex and or gender. The ERA was presented to the Senate in 1923. After a long 49 years, both houses of Congress passed the amendment. This somewhat sparked what would become the second wave of the feminist movement and produced the idea that women had a chance at gaining equality, not only politically, but in all aspects of society. Moving on to the leaders of the feminist movement, Betty Friedan was the first president of the National Organization for Women, also known as NOW. She is one of the most respected women in the second wave of feminism. Author of The Feminist Mystique, Betty Friedan depicted the roles of women in industrial society, inspiring women around the world to leave homemaking behind and begin a journey fighting for the rights in the workplace. Now about the feminine mystique and about the feminist leaders. The book sold over three million copies and it helped launch the women's movement. Overnight, Betty Friedan became one of the movement's modern day feminist leaders. She went on to found NOW, the National Organization for Women, in 1966, and was its first president until 1970. In the years that followed, other Jewish American women emerged as leaders of the women's movement. Gloria Steinem and Bella Abzug joined Friedan in founding the National Women's Political Caucus. And in 1972, Steinem became the founding editor and publisher of Ms. Magazine. However, Betty Friedan, the Jewish American housewife who had dreams of a more equal sisterhood, continued advocating economic equality as an essential route to empowerment for women until her death in 2006. What do you believe the goals of the feminist movement were? Mainly focused on getting um, the vote for women, which has succeeded in doing, get, at work toward getting equal rights for women under the law, equal work for equal pay, and also working um, against violence against women. It was more like a process. It was like an awakening. It was, they called it consciousness raising. I took a course in feminist philosophy. I worked in Head Start with poor women and children. I was a poor single mother myself. Um, and I got involved in women's services and I also worked at a tenants' rights center and organized a conscious raising group for women. And just basically it was, it was everything we did. It was every part of our lives. It was our relationships with each other. It was our, what we chose to do for our jobs, and I ended up getting a degree in criminal justice and working, again, like I said, with uh, rape victims and battered women. So, um, and then I went into counseling ultimately and got my master's in that, and my focus was on women's services, and I was coordinator of a program that provided housing for single mothers coming out of shelters and uh, problems with drug abuse and things like that. There are no clear conditions the social movement can fulfill due to the fact that it has been evolving since the 1800s. However, I feel that the background tension started when women began to notice and question their roles in society. They saw gender inequalities. The exciting event may have been when Virginia Woolf's book, A Room of One's Own, was published. This book discussed women's suffrage in the early ages and brought it to the attention of women around the country. Milling occurred when women began to express their want and need for change. The object of attention happened when men returned home after World War II and women were made to leave their paying jobs and go back to the home and caretaking setting. 
The common impulse was to fight for the right of equality and the ability to have an honest and good paying job. As for the powder keg moment, I feel that it happened in 1920 when women got the right to vote. That really set things rolling for the feminist movement. I gave the commencement address at Smith College, which is my college, <laughs> and I said to them, okay, I was sitting where you were sitting 51 years ago. Let's think about how far we've come in, in a half century and imagine the class of 2057 when you're coming back and where we could be. And that's what's exciting, I think, because now we have some idea of women's history, which was a complete was there was no <laughs> such thing as women's history when I when I was in school Z zero. Now they're strengthened by women's history, so they can see how far we've come, and they can begin to project into the future how far we might go. And that's really exciting, really, really exciting. The feminist movement was a revolutionary movement. It was also proactive because it looked for some social change that dealt with ultimate equality throughout society. Bella Abzu played a large role in the feminist movement. Running for mayor and being elected into the U.S. Congress in 1970, Bella had an agenda of her own. She was re-elected into the Congress three times. She was also an activist in the feminist movement. She was championed for being the first to call for the impeachment of President Nixon and evolved in the anti-war movement. Being a founder of NOW, along with Betty Friedan, Bella helped try to end women's suffrage around the world. Another leader that influenced the feminist movement was Coretta Scott King. She was the leader of the African American Civil Rights Movement. Even though Coretta focused on civil rights, she did partake in the feminist movement by attending rallies. Starting her career off as a singer, she soon became an icon, but not for her singing. After her husband, Martin Luther King Jr. died, she instantly took over his activism and civil rights. She once said, struggle is a never-ending process. Freedom is never really won. You earn it and you win it every generation. The feminist movement's favorability could be considered positive in the fact that equality occurs, change is made, and women and men can become more independent. The social movement life cycle for the the feminist movement. It is still in the process, so there is no determining its success. I feel the feminist movement cycle will never end because the world is always changing and feminism will change along with it. How did you participate in the feminist movement? I guess the Take Back the Night demonstrations, I, I went to those. There were, I believe, demonstrations uh, for the ERA, if I remember correctly. Um, and I was involved in groups that were, I was involved in a group of women organizers. Mainly we went, we went intending to, to be involved in a peaceful demonstration, to listen to speakers speak, and to, um, you know, yell out our support, and, and by our presence show the, show the government that, you know, we were all united in wanting these changes.